So we will talk about plot frames and uh, what we need to do to modify or adjust certain plot frames. In, uh, in the ePlan lingo, a plot frame stands for a title block or um, depending on what application you use, but basically the sheet in which you work in. Um, in this particular case here, I have a, uh, a title page which it has a, a title block assign, ass, assigned to it. And this title block, again, the, the ePlan uh, word for it is called a plot frame. So let's say I want to create a new page. So I'm going to grow, right click new, create a new page, page two. This is going to be a multi line schematic. And in this particular case, what I will do is I'm not going to put any, I'm going to use the default standard um, plot frame. And when this field is empty here, uh, the system is going to use the plot frame by default uh, assigned to the project. So as soon as I hit OK, I have here a two ladder uh, plot frame. Now, of course, in this particular case, what I'd like to do is two things. I'd like to modify a few things. And of course, I'd like to remove this um, second ladder because I need to work on a particular uh, project that has a bigger um, a space requirement needed. And of course, I'm going to have to get rid of this uh, second ladder. Another thing too that I might want to do is I might remove the logo and maybe change a little bit of the data that's down here. So don't necessarily want to create a, um, a completely new one, uh, just going to want to grab one and, and modify it. So how do I do this? I'm going to go under utilities, master data, I will go to plot frame and we recommend to use the copy function. So obviously copy a, an existing plot frame and then just modify it to, the, to your liking. So I'm just going to say here 76, hit OK. And now it's asking me to give it a name. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name and I'm going to select here 76, same name, but this time I'm going to call it uh, one ladder. Okay, and I'm just going to hit OK, save it. And so here you have the, 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 the plot frame editor that opens up. You'll notice in your page navigator, you have a new page that was created. And this is letting you know that you're in a title block uh, or a plot frame editor mode. And what you have is all the graphical elements. So I have the rectangle. I got some lines. I got some special text. And you'll notice here I got some yellow text. And this is the special text that comes in. Uh, the text is automatically going to be modified and changed, all depending on the different properties or the different uh, information I assign to this, to this project. So of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, one way that you can, most likely a lot of people are going to uh, be in this editing mode and they will have the name of the property show up. But I like to turn it into a number because in this in this case right here, I have the name of the property, but it's kind of overlapping and it's a little bit hard for me to work on. So I'd rather work as uh, under views, properties as numbers and make sure that I'm looking at all my properties that are smart as a number and every other property that is a text, it's not going to be any smarts, just regular standard text. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get rid of a few things. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the second ladder. So very easily, I can just go ahead and delete it. And here here, of course, I can grab the logo and I can remove the logo and I can replace the logo with anything that I want. I can have I have here the image file Im, um, import function and I can go ahead and select here um, this logo if I want. I can bring it in. Uh, I can bring any any logo I want and I'll just bring that in, copy it into my default project. It, it exists. You want me to override it? Sure. So I'm just going to you know bring it in like that and I can also maybe adjust my grid settings so I can fit it in a little bit better so I'm gonna fit it there like so and it's gonna come in I can reposition it it's very all all the graphic or all the graphical properties all the graphical information um, that you want you have access to also what we need to do is we need to uh, um, maybe adjust certain other graphical elements here I can assign maybe a line so you have access to all the different uh, graphical functionality um, I can grab this line if it's too thick I can grab the line here and maybe copy the format of it and assign the format to this other secondary line so now it all looks the same. So very easy functions to use and of course I can insert a text. In this particular case I can say text is going to be um, this is going to be fax number and I can go like that and I can put the fax number information here and of course inside here I will put a special property that will uh, that will 
um, show or display the fax number of the company. So in this case here, I can go under insert and I have special text and I have here a project property, a page property, plot frame property, and so on. Now the page properties will be anything relating to the project in itself. So throughout the whole project, this information is going to be displayed here. Um, page property will only be uh, properties associated to particular pages. So uh, the information might change such as draw, uh, drawing number or page number, uh, page properties and so on and so forth. These are the properties that you can find under page. Plot frame properties, I like to use this because I, um, I like to see what plot frame I'm using in this particular project. So of course I can uh, display the plot frame name. I can put that on an invisible layer so it doesn't show but I can see it. So I, I, I have some kind of reference point to know which are the plot frames I'm using in, in this project per se. So I'm going to grab a project property because that's for my fax number. And when the dialog opens up, I can click here on the three dots and I can go to project properties. I can look here for company or customer fax and I can grab that property customer fax and I can bring it in. And of course it's coming in with, um, with uh, the default standard text format but I can always change that. I'm going to drop this in uh, just here, it doesn't really matter and in the properties of this um, special property I can change the format. I can make it text a little bit bigger maybe if I want to make it bigger or I want to make it smaller it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, in this case here I'm just going to make it slightly bigger and I'm also going to adjust the alignment. Instead of saying basis left I'm going to make it basis center so it's going to grow it, all depending on, on, on where the insertion point is. And that insertion point, if you're wondering, you'll notice that you have a little circle or a blue square that appears when I click on it. So that's the insertion point of this property and the text is going to grow all depending on the insertion point that you see here. So now since it's in the middle, the text is going to stretch outwards uh, towards the edges on both sides. If I had the, that little uh, blue circle, if I had it in the front, that means my text is going to flow to the right. If I had it on the back, my text is going to flow to the left and so forth. So I'm going to put this here somewhere smack in the middle. And uh, if I really want to be precise, I can grab here, use some uh, some drawing techniques. I can put two lines here, like so. And of course, I'm going to say I, I want not necessarily basis center, but I want middle center completely. And here I'd like to move this text and really put it smack dab in the middle here. And one function that I could use is over here, you do have um, some toolbars that will permit you to modify uh, graphic information. So here I can turn on my um, edit graphics or my graphic toolbar which is already here but I can also I'm, I'm just gonna switch my workspace environment that's a lot better and what I'm gonna do is I got these magnets here and this magnet here is my design mode so when I select this device here and I say move if I right click here and I say move it's automatically going to snap to the center point or, or to where the handle is if I wanted to move it through a different um, a look from a different handle or a different point I can activate this design mode and as soon as I select here move if I go here move it's asking me okay where's the handle that you want to position it from so I can actually click over here and that's going to be my handle that's going to be the, the point that the system is going to use to move this uh, element around so of course I'm going to deactivate that I don't need that so I'm going to go here move and I'm going to smack smack it in the middle due to the fact that I have this uh, function here object snap on off which is activated it's going to automatically snap to the middle of that line I can place it there and I can go ahead and I can remove these lines. I'm just going to delete that one, delete that one, and now it's smack in the middle of this of this square. That's exactly why I wanted it, and uh, I can proceed to uh, continue my modifications. Now, of course, this is the graphical aspect of uh, the the title block or the, the plot frame, and I want to get into the smart. So over here, one of the things I can do is I'm going to go to View and Paths. And you'll notice that I have a grid in the background. So the smarts are going to be transferred throughout the grid. And you'll notice that I have the two ladder function still, um, still activated. So of course I got to get rid of one of those ladders. And of course I can't grab it. It's not a graphical element I can move or delete. So I have to go to the smarts of the, of the, of the plot frame. And I got to go to its properties. And in its properties you have here a number of ladders. And I'm going to set that to 1. So 1 and I'm going to hit OK. And now you'll notice my grid shrank, but of course, since it's not a graphical element, I can't move it. I'm going to have to stretch that all the way to the other side so that I can, uh, the devices that I will place on this 
particular plot frame um, will have a cross-reference. If I place any devices in this air zone here, um, there's not going to be any cross-reference or no smarts. So that's going to be a little bit uh, cumbersome. So uh, what I need to do, make sure I have my view paths turned on and I'm going to go here to the properties. So I'm going to go to properties at a plot frame and under column width so I'm looking for column width one because it's only have one column and then if you don't find a property of course you can click on the new button and from the new button you can go ahead and find a property you're looking for column width and of course I'm going to grab the column that I need not the whole thing because it's going to grab all 1000 columns so here I'm going to grab the column width and I'm going to just double that in size so I'm going to say this is going to be 34 and as soon as I hit OK, that automatically gets transferred across and my smarts are now on the other side completely all over the place and it's covering the whole um, plot frame. So anywhere I place a device, the information is going to be transferred across. And of course, here, if I go back to the property settings, there are a whole bunch of other properties, number of rows that you want to attribute to this uh, uh, plot frame, all the smarts that you'd like to attribute to a plot frame will be found here. Information such as contact image margin on path, what is the distance of the uh, contact image information that you want when you're creating uh, your uh, plot frame. So um, there's a lot of properties here to go over and a lot of information to, to look into. But in a nutshell, this is basically the way that we proceed to creating a plot to creating a plot frame from from and modifying one from an existing one. Now I'm going to close this because there's no save function. So I'm just going to close the plot frame, close it. That's going to be saved. And if I want to use it in this particular project here, I can go and set it as my default a plot frame for the whole project or just in the properties of the plot frame I can go over here on the plot frame name and I can go to browse and under my browse I can grab the plot frame I just created now hit open and associate it to this one page and there you go my logo is there yeah, information is passed transferred through the fax number is not showing up so I can actually go to the properties of the project and I can find the property called fax customer fax so here I got customer fax and in here I could type in whatever is the fax number of this client 555-123-67 hit OK and that information automatically gets transferred across and is positioned in the right locations so this is this was how to create a plot frame from an existing one and making slight modifications to it